insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 33, Time Management. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my vibrant and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing this week, Maddie? Pretty good. So this was our first full week of full days of new school, right? Yep. How'd you make out this week? Pretty good. Good. Any major problems? Not that I know of. You like it so far? Starting to, yes. Good. That's a good that's a good sign. So this week we're going to be talking about time management. And when I had prepared the show notes, it was under the guise of helping you manage school time and schoolwork and stuff like that. Um, but really time management can be used in any walk of life. I use it all the time at work for project management and for managing my staff and so forth. So time management is a useful tool everyone can use, but we're going to look at it from the perspective mainly of teens and schoolwork and so forth. Alrighty. So shall we get into it? We shall. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is sort of define time management. So this comes from a website called Mind Tools. Uh, The definition that they have for time management is the process of organizing and planning how to divide your time between specific activities. Good time management enables you to work smarter, not harder, so that you get more done in less time, even when time is tight and pressures are high. Failing to manage your time damages your effectiveness and causes stress, something we know we all suffer from that we try to minimize. Yeah. So uh, tell me, what, what do you know of time management and, and minimizing stress through time management? Well, I know in my new school that um, t- you have to actually use time management because you don't, like before, you didn't have as long of a period as you do now, like you have a shorter period than you did before. And I know now that you have to do time management for when you're doing quizzes and tests along with doing schoolwork. So how does time management help you, at least from what you've seen so far with handling those things? Well, I know it has um, kept me more organized. I've noticed it kept me more organized and um, I'm able to get things done in a quicker amount of time. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely one way to do it and allows you to maximize your, your, the resources that you have to be more effective. So let's go through and take a look at um, some different types of time managers. So this section of information comes from a website called Education Connections, Educational Connector, Connections Tutoring, if I could speak this morning. So they classify time managers in two types. Type one are kids with what they call a loud internal clock who have a fabulous sense of time and can self-monitor how long things are taking and make adjustments. These are the kids where their alarm clock goes off at 7 a.m. in the morning. They're able to shower, eat breakfast, and get out the door to meet the bus at 8 a.m. without fail. That's type one. Type two, kids with soft internal clocks who struggle to be on time, maintain deadlines, and plan ahead appropriately. 
These kids are much less aware of passing time and are usually the kid you have to poke, prod, and micromanage to get the to make sure they get out the door on time in the morning and sometimes even have to drive them because they're late. Um, so let me ask you, which type do you think you are based on those two definitions? I think I'm actually the um, closer to the first definition. And why is that? Well, for one, since I get up at 5.50 in the morning, I, and I'm actu- I've actually been used to it because I... Um, at my old school, when I went to the aftercare, I would have to get up at 6.20 and have to meet a specific deadline. Right. And I've been used to it for my entire life, basically. And now it's just, like, earlier in the morning, and then I, and then in, and then I just have to get, get the bus. Yeah, and I think that's important. You know, habit, and we'll talk about um, time management techniques in a little bit, but habit is one of those things. Now, do you think um, that you plan ahead as well to help with your time management? Well, I've noticed that for whenever I get homework, um, I would, like, split it up into sections. Like, I do the easy ones first because you guys weren't home, and the harder ones I do later. And if I needed your help, I'd um, ask you guys when you got home. Yeah, that's that's a, a brilliant example of time management there is knowing how to separate the tasks and do them most efficiently. Now, it's important handling time management, knowing which type of time manager you are is very important because that's going to dictate what type of techniques work best for you. What might work best for a type one doesn't necessarily work best for a type two. Mm-hmm. There's many benefits to time management. So we'll come back and we'll talk about those benefits real quick just to sort of put things into perspective. Okay. So the website verywellfamily.com tells us that high school can be very busy, but the adult world can be even busier. So it's important to start teaching your teen how to manage his time, his or her time, now. They'll enjoy immediate benefits such as the following. And you tell me if you get any of these benefits from time management. Mm -hmm. Reduced anxiety when projects are due in school or test dates are approaching. Based on your time management techniques, do you find that to be a benefit for you? Well, like, whenever I got a project or anything like that, I would always bring it to you guys so we could figure out how to manage the time. And I've noticed for when we have to do reading projects that I basically split up um, the, uh, the, uh... The workload. Yeah, the chap... Like, I would read part of the book every day, and then I would, like, answer questions on it the next couple... and have days like that. Yeah, well, and that's sort of like what you did with your summer reading, where you looked at how many pages you had to do, you looked at how many days you had off, and at that point in time, it was just a mathematical equation as to how to deal with it. Yeah, because I wanted to, like, spread the book out. I wouldn't read the book, like, for the first five days and then just be done with it because I'd probably more than likely forget it, most of it. So splitting it up actually not only reduces the stress, but can also help you have a better... A better memory. That's a very good point. So that you're reading it consistently throughout the summer so that that information is still fresh in your memory. That's a very good point. Yep. The next benefit that they talk about is increased responsibility and independence. Does does time management give you that feeling of independence? Yes, actually, because I would normally come home and um, since you guys wouldn't be home yet, I would immediately go straight to my homework after calling you guys and getting a quick snack. Look, and with time management, it made me feel more responsible because I was able to ma- because I was able to manage my time in a, in a good manner. And the other thing with that is with the responsibility and the independence that you get from it, there's also, and I'm sure you've experienced this already, there's a certain amount of um, pride and satisfaction that you take from from getting that responsibility and independence and fulfilling those responsibilities. Like you've, you've 
sort of earned it at that point in time when you can do it yourself. You know, you're not leaning on someone else. Yeah. So the next thing they talk about is better decision-making skills. And I think what we've talked about already sort of supports this with your approach to it. But do you think that your decision-making skills have improved since you started using time management techniques? I mean, I think so. Because, like, as I said earlier, like deciding what homework I do first and what homework I will do last, I definitely think it's helped me make better decisions and more responsible decisions. Like, um, I'm starting to eat healthier snacks like tomatoes and fruits when I get home instead of, like, just foraging for candy and stuff. Sure. And the other thing is, and you've sort of demonstrated this already, is when you get home, the first thing that you do is tackle your homework. You don't sit down and watch TV or play video games or something like that. So that alone is a sign of very good decision-making skills. And, and I just want to say for a thing, if I get homework on a Friday, I immediately do it when I get home. I will not wait till the last second on Sunday to do my homework. I will not do that. You cannot make me do that. <laughs> well, and that kind of puts that that pressure on you all, all weekend long so you don't really get to enjoy the weekend either. Yeah. So more time for family and friends. Do you find that your time management allows you more free time since you're more efficient? Yeah, I can definitely say so. Like, um, after I do my homework, I've no I notice that I have a bunch of free time to like do whatever I would normally do for in my free time and I definitely really appreciate that. Because if like Back to the homework example on Fridays. Like, if I, like, just didn't do the homework immediately on Friday and just waited, like, did some on Saturday, Sunday, and Friday, like, that, I mean, I know it might work for some people, but I would have a lot less free time unless I, like, just banged it out on Friday. Absolutely. What about better... Uh performance at school do you think time management's helping you improve your schoolwork yeah because it's actually stopped getting um my anxiety going up because i remember before i used time management i was always stressing and you can probably you probably know that period of time where i basically couldn't handle anything that was going on and until i started using time management i was basically an emo emotional wreck who had no idea what she was doing and we've done podcasts on that, too. Yep. <laughs> and I also think the podcast also helped with that. So you mentioned this already, but the, the other benefit they talk about here is more opportunities to relax and unwind, which is what you alluded to in getting your, your schoolwork done and having more free time. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's a good list of benefits that – that we have for time management and, and most of which you're already benefiting from now, which is great. Yeah. Um, so we'll come back with some uh, essential steps towards good time management that parents can teach. Teens usually have a fairly structured schedule. Their school day and their after school activities are planned out for them. As a result, Many of them don't learn how to manage their time wisely when they have some downtime. So here are some skills that you, as a parent, and I'm speaking to the audience, can teach your teen to uh, manage their time skills, improve their time skill management. So the first one they talk about here is model good time management habits. So if you're always running late or you miss a lot of deadlines, your team will follow suit. So it's lead by example here. Practice managing your own time wisely and show your team that you can accomplish the most important tasks in any given day. And that's one of the things that I try to do as well. And like, you know, on the weekends, we kind of have a game plan going into the weekend. We know what we're going to do. We kind of know when we're going to do it. Yeah, but we don't know where we're going to eat for lunch. No, that's always up for grabs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like if we sort of know where we're going on the weekends, we kind of have an idea of how long it's going to take to get to where we're going, when we need to start getting ready for it, when we need to be out the door. Um, and these are all habits because mommy and I both are in fields of work that require us to utilize time management skills. We're, we're both fairly well versed in it. 
So we're pretty good at planning things out and knowing how to time things. Um, and by us doing that, you in turn see that, and hopefully it's just sort of passed on to you by osmosis. I mean, to be honest, I actually haven't really missed any of my classes by being late. I have been able to get my work done as quickly as I can, and I think I'm pretty good with deadlines. I would tend to agree. You don't really have any problems. And to be honest, whenever I have to have mommy sign something and like it's on the weekend and she decides to sign it on Sunday. I'm like, just do it on Friday. I know, Friday. I know, that does, that does annoy you. Yep. Uh, so the next thing, uh, give your teens time management tools, whether it's a planner that your teen writes everything in or an app that manages your teen's schedule. Help your teen find the tools that will work best for him or her. Talk about the importance of creating a schedule and using lists to prioritize their time wisely. Now, this isn't something that we've actively done yet. However, we have taken great pains to provide you with the technological means in which to do this. Yep. Um, it's just a matter of us sitting down and showing you that, hey, if you put the schedule in on your phone or on your iPad and you wear your watch during the day, your watch will chime and let you know when these things need to get done, when you need to do this, and so forth. Um, so that's something, that's going to be the next step in what we've been sort of putting the foundation in place for here to help you organize your time. I kind of wanted to wait to see how things went, and you're doing fantastic at this point in time. So I really don't want to sort of rock the boat by implementing anything else until you actually need some additional help yeah i've actually been pretty good i actually don't need to use the one little note thing mommy gave me on the first day where it like tells you where my classes are and when i need to go now i can basically go to my classes with ease and that is a great segue into the next little helping tool here Ooh. they say encourage your teen to write down their schedule your teen's time may easily get taken up with video games or social media if they're not careful. Teach them to schedule their day so they can set aside the time for chores, homework, and other responsibilities. Encourage them to schedule free time as well so time doesn't idly pass without feeling like they've done anything fun. And I think that's you know what mommy gave you, that one little note that she gave you was the first step to that. But I think... We sort of do this kind of in a <clears throat> semi-formal but informal way. Like we have the calendar, the dry erase calendar for the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So any appointments, any trips, anything like that goes on that calendar. Mm -hmm. So you always have that constant reminder by the refrigerator. Yeah. The other thing that we do is, you know, you don't make play dates with your friends, but you kind of know, all right, Sunday we're going here. So Saturday... We have to do this stuff in the morning, like the podcast and stuff. And then after that, we can go do something. I can go do something with my friends. So you kind of have that that uh, unofficial schedule in place already, which is good. And it helps you manage your time efficiently. Um, so the next thing they talk about is help your team prioritize activities. It's common for teens to have conflicts in their schedules. A basketball game, birthday party, or church activity may all coincide. Talk to your teen about how to prioritize activities based on their values and commitments. And again, that's sort of where that calendar comes in. Mm -hmm. Where we sort of, you know, like mommy has things that she does and you do and I do. And, you know, when we're doing family things, we kind of need to make sure we're all on the same calendar, on the same schedule there so that, that we can all have time together. Yeah. So I think we do a pretty good job with that. Yeah. Avoid nagging. Does do I nag? Um, I don't even know what I don't really know what. Like do I stay on top of you? Hey, can you do this? Did you do this? Did you finish this? Did you do that type thing? Mm. Only when it comes to laundry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, when it comes to my chores, that's when you're really doing it. Right. With homework and. Actually, with projects and cleaning, that's basically the only time where you do it. You so, don't really need to do it on homework because you know how insane I am about it. Absolutely. 
So they say it can be tempting to nag your teen or offer repeat reminders, but telling your teen to do their homework or their chores over and over again reduces the responsibility. Set rules about your expectations and follow through with consequences when necessary. When your team will learn to manage his time, then your team will learn to manage their time better. Now, we did do this, remember. Early on, when you started doing the, the chores, um, there were times that, you know, you didn't do them or you didn't do them in a timely fashion. And, and I had to pick up the slack and do them. And there were consequences. What's the consequences of not doing your chores? Uh, you don't get paid. Exactly. So... The advantage that I have with the chores is there's a definite risk reward to doing the chores. Yeah, honestly, I've kind of gotten used to it now. It's basically just like wake up early on a Sunday morning and just start the chores. It only takes like 20 minutes now, and honestly, I've kind of gotten used to it since I've been doing it for over a year now. That's pretty good. And for the record, if it only takes about 20 minutes and you get 20 bucks for it, you're making 60 bucks an hour, which is pretty darn good. Yeah. So, just for the record. Uh, set limits on electronics. Oh, that's a dirty idea there, isn't it? We haven't done this yet. And I don't think there's really any... Now, of course, you wouldn't real... think there is a need for it, right? Well, but... I know not for homework, because you know immediately as I get home, I'm like... Yeah, I, no complaints about homework. You're right. Other things at the dinner table... When I don't... When we're out to eat at the dinner table or, you know, just general downtime, your teen may waste countless hours on social media or playing video games if they're not careful. One thing is I don't use social media, just saying. Establish rules. And to be honest, I don't really play video games that much anymore. That help them create healthy habits with their cell phone and other devices. So you don't play Gosha Life. That is not a video game. That is a video game. It is I a mobile hate... game. <clears throat> it is a mobile thing. game. Oh my! A video, a mobile game is a video game. Don't try to draw distinctions there. Oh my lord! Encourage your teen to set goals. Talk to your teen about personal goals they want to reach, then help them identify how much time they'll need to work on that goal each day. Whether they want to exercise for 30 minutes three times each week uh, or they decide to apply for scholarships on Saturday afternoon each month, goal setting is a great way to help them manage their time. So goal-oriented, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and you probably already know my goal, which, which, my goal, which might seem hard for some but won't, probably won't be hard for me, staying a straight-A student. Wow, you're you're beautiful, brilliant, and modest all in one. Look at that. Good job patting yourself on the back there. Gee. How about we come back with some time management tips? Alrighty. So for this, we go back to our favorite site, Teen, uh, Teen Advisor. They say one thing that accompanies high school is the increase of independent time, and this is a problem for some students who have several extracurricular activities that they have to attend and loads of homework on top of them. Now, you're not into extracurricular activities yet. I suspect that will change this year or as we move through your school career. Uh, does it seem like there's never enough time in the day to get everything done? I feel like you're always running late. Here are some tips for taking control of your time and organizing your life. Now, as we've discussed already, you're pretty organized to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I don't think a lot of these things necessarily apply to you, but this is more for the audience sake here. Yep. So there's a list of 10 things on here and we can probably bang through these pretty quick. All right. So the first thing they say is make a to-do list every day. I think that's kind of excessive, but Yeah, okay. like you can do it for like, you can start off with a couple of days because I don't think like doing it every single day is just going to, I think that's just going to cause more stress because you might not remember 
Oh, and I prefer having like a task list for the week. Yeah, like that would be um, and, and, an easier way. Yeah, and like I know what I need to do for the whole week, and the things that I need to do by a certain time get priority. So doing it every day is is kind of excessive, and you know, it can be a waste of time too if you're if you're sort of doing the same thing over and over. But they say put things that are most important at the top of the list to do, obviously. Uh, if it's easier, use a planner to track all of your tasks. And don't forget to reward yourself for your accomplishments. And I think that's the important thing here is if you get everything on your list done, pat yourself on the back, you know, have a little treat, but make sure that you acknowledge your accomplishments there. Yeah, honestly, whenever I'm done with homework, I know, like, okay, I can go watch YouTube now. Yeah. Like, that's basically my reward. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, number two is use spare minutes wisely. Uh, get some reading done on the bus ride home from school, for example, uh, and you'll kill two birds with one stone. So, the, you know, the downtime that you have in transit between one place to another, whether it's on the weekend, whether it is back and forth to school, you know, if you've got 20 minutes on the bus, use it wisely. Study for the exam. Read a couple extra pages of the book that you read. Whatever it is, uh, don't just veg out and, and, you know, doze off during the bus ride, they're saying. And, and I get that. Yeah, but I've noticed it's hard to write on the bus. Writing, so yes, don't. I agree. And some people get motion sickness trying to read in a mo moving vehicle, too. Yeah, I know I've done that when we have to go on vacation and I have a whole stack of homework. Right. So, you, you know, you got to know what your limitations are. Yeah. Number three is it's okay to say no. If your boss asks you to work on Thursday night and you have a final exam the next morning, realize that it's okay to say no. Keep your short and long-term priorities in mind. Now, obviously, that's not a high school example there. Yeah. But, you know, if you've got something, if you've got a project you're working on over the weekend and it's due on Monday and your friends come knocking at the door, you got to say, no, I need to finish this before I can go out. So keeping priorities done. Find the right time. Uh, you'll work more efficiently if you figure out when you do your best work. For example... If your brain handles math better in the afternoon, don't wait until late night to do it. So a lot of this might have to do with fatigue. A lot of it has to do with distractions. So, for instance, you might be very good at doing math as long as there's no distractions around. So you don't want to do your math in uh, an environment where the TV's on or mommy and daddy are talking or something like that, you may need quiet time to do that. Yeah, I remember whenever I had leftover homework and whenever you guys were talking, I would literally just go up in my room to hopefully drown out the noise. Yeah, so you got to sort of know yourself and what your environment is. Mm -hmm. Review your notes every day. You'll reinforce what you've learned so, uh, so you need less time to study. You'll also be ready if your teacher calls on you to give uh, or gives a pop quiz. Now, you know, it's funny that that's in this list at number five here when the idea of taking notes isn't mentioned. Um, taking notes is very important. So as you're sitting in class, one thing that studies have found is that by writing down thoughts, it helps you retain them better. So as your teacher is speaking to you in class about a lesson, write down key words, write down key phrases in a notebook. It doesn't necessarily have to be complete sentences. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, paragraphs or anything or structured. But, you know, as, a, as someone is sitting here talking about time management, you might write down time management. You might write down stop yawning when you're in the middle of a podcast or something like that. You know, you could do any of those things, write them down on a piece of paper, and then when you go back later, instead of reading over the entire lesson that was given that day, you can read over your notes, and your notes will help you play out how that lesson was, was given to you during the day. So it's a great way to study two different ways, but it also helps with your time management skills. Also, we're actually doing something similar to that called um, focus notes, which you basically, like, if, like, the teacher writes down something, like, you write down important parts in it, highlight, circle, stuff like that. Yeah, so. absolutely, yeah. 
And if you can mark up your notebooks or your your, your stop yawning. Oh my! If man. you can write down your your things or mark up your books, do that with highlighters and stuff like that. That's a great way to go back when you're studying and know the information you need to look at. Uh, get a good night's sleep. Really. Did you get a good night's sleep, by the way? Yes. Because you're yawning like crazy. Oh, my Lord. I do it every time. Oh, my. You make me feel like I'm boring you here. I am not. You are not boring me. All right. Number six, get a good night's sleep. Running on empty makes the day seem longer and your tasks seem more difficult. Um, no need to harp on that. We've talked about good, getting a good night's sleep for quite some time now. Even though it <clears> hasn't <throat> really been that effective. Well, you need to work on it. That's an area that you need improvement on. I know. Along with social interaction. That too, yeah. Uh, number seven, <clears throat> communicate your schedule to others. If phone calls are proving to be a distraction, tell your friends you take social calls from 7 to 8 p.m. It may sound silly, but it helps. Basically, don't bother me between these two hours because I'm working. Thing is, I don't call my friends. So. I know, but your friends do come over on the weekends occasionally, so it's good for them to know. Hey, I don't, I can't come out until such and such time. I know. And if you start hanging out with friends after school, same thing, you know. But it, it'll be less, you know, that'll be less of an issue for you than for them because you'll probably have had time to get all your work done. Yeah. Uh, number eight, become a master of your time. Figure out how much free time you have each week. Give yourself a time budget and plan your activities accordingly. Very basic time management skills there. Yeah. Number nine, and this is a good one for you. Don't waste time worrying. Have you ever wasted an entire evening by worrying about something that you're supposed to be doing? And Was it somewhat. worth it? Not really. Instead of agonizing and procrastinating, just do it. Well, I didn't. I don't. I don't really procrastinate. I just worry. Yes. A lot. So just don't. You know, be prepared. You know, know the information, know the subject matter, know the, you know, for school, know what the map of the high school looks like, and just throw yourself into it and deal with it. Yep. And the last one that they have here is don't push yourself way too much. Setting goals that are unrealistic set you up for failure. That's another important one to understand. Mm -hmm. While it's good to set high goals for yourself, be sure not to overdo it. Set goals that are difficult yet reachable. And to add to that, I will also say that make sure that when you set your goals, if you have a, a big lofty goal that you want to accomplish like i don't know getting straight a's well instead of shooting to get straight a's take that goal and then break it up into smaller objectives you know all right so i need to get past this marking period here and this do this project and do this and do that and take that big objective that you have break it into smaller more um achievable goals that lead ultimately to that end goal. So instead of, you know, thinking, oh my goodness, I have to climb this entire mountain, set break points along the way for that mountain so that mm -hmm. as you accomplish those things, they're working towards the ultimate goal, but you also have a point to say, all right, I got this far. Let me stop. Let me take a breath. Let me pat myself on the back. All right, let's move on more. And, and that's how you sort of accomplish goals in a timely manner without getting overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. uh, they sum up by saying, consider these tips, but personalize your habits so that they suit you. If you set priorities that fit your lifestyle, you'll have a better chance of achieving your goals. Um, and based on this discussion alone, I think you're probably in a pretty good position with your time management at this point in time. Yeah, the one... One of the things I'm actually okay with instead of having to work on. I'm actually pretty good with this one. Well, and I think a lot of that comes from just years of getting there. I mean, we didn't have time management, you know, from the time you were born. This is These are acquired skills that you learn over time. And, and as you use those and exercise those skills, you get better at them and you get more efficient. 
So kudos to you. Yay. Uh, I think that was all that I had this week. I think we'll come back. We'll get your closing remarks and any shout outs that you might have. Go for closing remarks. Alrighty, so for everyone in the audience out there who has problems with time managing, um, just remember that time management isn't a waste of time. Well, look, pun intended. Wow, that was pretty good. I like that. <laughs> um, anywho, um, it would be it's very important to have time management so that you have. Not only will it be good for school, but it will be good for other things in life because, as you said earlier, Daddy, time management will be used in pretty much every scenario by almost everyone. That's true. That's so, it. That's pretty much it. Any shout-outs? Uh, I guess I'll give a shout-out to you, to Daddy, because you helped me with my time management. And Thank I'm pretty you. sure I would not have, I would not be as good with time management if it wasn't for your help. You were the one who taught me break things down by how easy and difficult they are. Awesome. I'm glad I was able to help. And I'm glad you were too. And I think that is all we had this week. Just a reminder, you can get the audio version of the podcast at podcast.insightsintheteens.com. Uh, you can get us uh, video-wise on youtube.com slash insights into things. You can visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can hit us up on our own website at www.insightsintothings.com. Yay. And I think that's it. Anything else? Not that I know of. All right. We are out. Bye, everyone. Bye.